Welcome to this presentation of a SMAX and Octane Illustrated Integration for DevOps use case. We will look at two parts in this video. The first is the use case that integrates incident to defect in an integrated process approach. And in the second part, we will look at how the integration is set up. The use case is fairly straightforward. Basically, an incident is created in SMAX associated with a specific incident model, which triggers the creation of a linked defect for tracking of an application defect by the R&D team that owns the application. Thereafter, as the defect is moved to closure, the, that triggers an incident validation and closure movement within the process flow in the incident we start here with the SMAX incident management application, where an agent can click a button to create a new incident. I'll report on this incident that the eXpense application has a security hole. And as I do that, I select the service associated with this. It's my eXpense application. And I can find a specific offering that allows me to create an application defect for having this tracked. As I do that, the incident is automatically categorized. It also has been assigned to an application services team that will follow it. And I am prompted to enter a further description of the defect for the R&D team. Seems like users can access private data via REST APIs. We can see that my incident has been created. And within the workflow, the incident has been moved automatically to initial support by its model. In the task plan, an automated flow has already executed to create a defect in Octane. And as that defect was successfully created, it has added a comment into my incident. And we can look at the details of that defect in a couple of places. First, within the assignment section of my incident, there is an external ticket link with a link to the defect in Octane. And I also see an external reference number, which gives me the defect ID. In addition, in the discussion tab, we can see that a comment has been added, stating that defect 4107 was created in Octane to track the incident. Of course, if we go back to the assignment section and we look at the external ticket link, the agent can click on that and be taken directly into Octane to look at the defect and track the status more closely. Here we can see the LAM Octane defect. eXpense application has a security hole with the actual title passed in and the description seems like users can access private data via REST APIs. The owner of the defect in Octane can also see the related incident ID 32370, which actually points to my incident in SMAX. So we have cross-referencing into the defect from SMAX and from the defect back into the incident when a user looks in Octane. Furthermore, as the owner of the defect moves it through various transitions, right now this defect is in its open phase. I'll move it into the fixed phase and save that. That status is moved over to this max incident as well. We'll see how that is done when we look at the integration setup. But for right now, let's take a look at the incident and I will force an update, which normally will take place automatically. And we can see right now that the status of the incident has been updated to reflect the status of the defect. This is tracked also within the assignment section where we can see the external ticket status. Right now it's on the phase defect fixed, which represents the name of the phase in Octane. Now back in Octane, let's go ahead and close the defect. Let's assume that it actually has been fixed by R&D. And as that phase transition changes here, we'll go back into the incident. And as we do that, we'll see a couple of things. First of all, in my incident, I see that the external ticket was now closed. And furthermore, if we actually look at the workflow, my incident has been moved over to review so that the incident owner can get the assigned task of reviewing that the fix has actually taken place correctly in the application. And if so, move the incident into its closure. Now that we've seen the integration, let's take a look at how this is set up. It's quite simple, actually, through a combination of code disk configuration. The first part of the integration is implemented within 
smacks inside the model definition for incident management. We can see that I have an application defect on the octane tracking model that has been defined. That's the model that was associated with the incident that we just saw being opened. And within this model, we have a task plan that automatically will create a defect in Octane and then add comments. If the defect is not created for some reason, maybe the connection didn't work, then a manual task is assigned to the application team to, to log that defect directly themselves. But the creation of the defect in Octane is done through the invocation of an operation orchestration flow that has been defined as part of this integration. And let's take a look at that. So within operations orchestration, we have this Max DevOps flow library. Within it, we have a couple of different integrations, one that does the same DevOps type of use case with Jira. We have the one with Octane and two different flows. The first one that was invoked when the incident is created by the model will create the incident the defect, sorry, in Octane. And as that succeeds, we'll then prepare some data back to update both the link, the status, and the ticket number in, in the incident and pass that information back through REST APIs in SMAX. The second flow in OO pulls updates from Octane and pushes them back into SMAX. It actually takes in as parameters a defect ID that tells us what defect we want to pull from Octane and then brings that information into SMAX. It actually retrieves the incident ID from the defect and knows what incident to update in SMAX. And this is triggered in a couple of different ways. Within SMAX, we have a configuration done in Studio for incident where a per schedule rule will trigger a recurring pull of the status via execution of a custom action. And the custom action in turn uh, executes that flow in, uh, in right now one hour intervals. So that's one way that the uh, update can occur. Of course, in the previous presentation, I triggered that custom action manually. Uh, in addition, we are currently working to have a webhook push that is also designed to call that same OO flow. And so in this case, there's no need for polling, but the, the webhook defined in Octane can trigger the, the calling of that web service whenever the defects are updated, changes to the defect are passed on uh, along with the ID. Uh, we're in the process of looking at how that can be developed as well. That's it. This brings the presentation to an end. The integration you've just seen is fully configurable and the documentation gives instructions on how what you saw today is configured into SMAX and into Octane as needed and further configuration, uh, tailoring changes can be done as needed to map to a customer's specific workflow needs. Thank you very much.